Hello, good morning, afternoon, whatever it is. I slept a solid 12 hours and I have no idea why. Um, well, I was giggless last night and uh, that's okay. It's good to have a night off. And then um, I went to bed about 10.30. Just zonked right out, man, and freaking my eyes open and I was like, wait a minute. And I usually know what time it is because I'm a pretty good timekeeper in my head uh, as far as chronological time. <laughs> it's, I guess, a perk of being a drummer. Um, anyways, uh, I, uh, my eyes opened and I felt like, well, crap, it's got to be around 9 o'clock, right? And so, yeah, it was 9 after 9 and then I said, okay, I'll just close my eyes for five more minutes. And then I opened them up again, it was 10.30. I'm like, holy crap! <laughs> 10 30. So, I don't even, I, I must have been abducted by aliens or something, or I don't know. It was pretty weird. But, anyways, uh, shout out to Raven's Brew Coffee because that's the people who make the best coffee in the world. I'm sorry, anyone else who brews coffee, but damn, Raven's Brew is just a bomb. Having Brewing Blend today, again, I ran out of Three Peckered Billy Goat, which is the best coffee if you ever had it. Uh, all right, so technique, hand technique mixed bag today is what we're going to do. Uh, what do you guys, uh, anybody, I don't have my dang, uh, give me two seconds, okay? Two seconds. Two minutes. Ah, uh, no, I'm kidding. Let me get my computer, my little one. Okay. I gotta get my netbook so I can uh, see any kind of interactions that occur with uh, this. So let's see. Uh, let's go back. Let me just find us. We're going to find us. We're going to find ourselves here. Okay. Okay, hand technique mixed back. There it is. Hi. Here we are. There's my silly butt right there. Okay, good. So if anybody uses that handy dandy little chat thing on the side there, we'll all be able to to see what's going on. Okay, so we're all back in order. Now. All right. So, the image quality went off screwy. Hmm. Um. Hopefully it's going to be alright, I'm on my network, and we're coming up, uh, I'll have my full studio rig here set real soon, but uh, anyhow, I hope, uh, I hope all this is going to work. Okay, so, let's talk about hand technique. Uh, as you know, my philosophy... As you know, that my philosophy philosophy on hand technique is uh, probably a little different than what a lot of people uh, perceive it as. Okay, when you hit a drum, you're not just hitting a surface. You're actually the stick. There's a little bit of a feedback loop that's occurring there. When you hit a surface, you are essentially transmitting energy out through the end of the stick and the surface is giving you something back in return. You're getting a tactile response off of the drum or surface that you're playing on. So, in that case, uh, one thing that you can do right away to start improving the fact that you do have some tactile uh, input is to get something like some work gloves. Should I have a pair right here and put some heavy gloves on. If you got any heavier, anything heavier is great. So what you can do is put on your gloves and start playing. Just get a feel for it. You know, and then when you take off the gloves and you do the same thing you may notice something and that something is 
twice. <laughs> that's something that you may notice is a little bit of vibration tingling back through the stick. That's good. Try to get more in touch with that because when you start feeling what your stick is giving back to you, then you're kind of completing a circuit. Okay, that's uh, really, it's, it's all electric, right? The body electric, I sing the body electric. It's a great album, actually. Um, so, uh, your sticks aren't necessarily striking devices. They're also tactile input devices that complete a feedback loop. All right, that's one thing. Here's the other thing. When we play drums, we have a rotation pattern. See these ellipses that I'm making right here? Those are our energy patterns in which we travel. Okay, now, even though we're playing like this right here, straight up and down, if you take from straight down and straight up, see there's a bottom and a top, it comes down to an abrupt stop and abrupt stop here. If you think about that, and it's just a mental, small mental tweak, think about it as being a ellipse that you're just making the, the hairpin turn at the top. And that by itself is going to increase a lot of flow. So these ovals that I'm making, my left hand's going clockwise, my right hand is going counterclockwise, or for you people in the UK, that'd be anti-clockwise, I think, yeah? Okay, so there's our motion patterns right there. That's our energy flow. Traditional grip, a little differently. Traditional grip is like turning a a crank underneath like that but it's a circle it's a circular movement and the way that I see traditional grip is it is a more introspective kind of thing because when you're playing traditional grip you're kind of bringing energy in towards yourself whereas this right here is more you know an elliptical thing and it's directed in that direction the traditional grip to me it's like sort of like pulling energy in and so from a mental and uh, tinfoil hat stand standpoint I like to uh, use traditional grip because it makes me aware more of what I'm doing and uh, it's kind of funny man I get a uh, I get people uh, sometimes come up to me at gigs and they'll say Wow, you're a guy who plays the drums the proper way. You know, it's like the proper way. What, uh, uh, you know, maybe I shouldn't have ate those candy bars before I played or, or what? I don't know. So, no, no your, your drumstick, you're using it the proper way. Well, there's no proper way to play drums. This right here was, was a, a, an attempt to avoid being, you know, crippled for life for playing drums for a few years in your youth, right? Because you'd be playing like this back in the early days when they slung a drum like this and, you know, they didn't have all the fancy mounting hardware. They had to have everything, you know, this way so they could, you know, that, so therefore that's why traditional grip exists, is to get inside like this, right? Okay, so over the years it's like the surface, it went from being like this right here where people would play off the surface and then it went to flat. And so it just adapted into that. So, okay, motion patterns, very important. Just get in touch with those. Instead of a stop and a start, a stop and a start, stop like that, uh, think about it as just you're going around the elliptical bend right there. Small mental tweak that will probably help your flow. <clears throat> okay, so let's get down a little farther into the stick, shall we? I know a lot of people think that this is the proper way to hold the drumstick. You pinch it here. No, it's not. You're, you're severely going to hurt yourself at some point by pinching in these front areas. The reason why is because when you pinch in the front, you take all the onus of control off of these guys back here. Now you've got three fingers that are probably not going to make as much positive contact on the stick that they could be. and. These three fingers, a lot of times people resort to wearing gloves because they're losing all of this grip power right here. Now, if I had somebody come in here and I said, take this drumstick out of my hand, you can try this. Have someone, you know, pinch, grip the stick like this and say, take this stick out of my hand. Somebody's going to come over and like that. Now, same thing. If you grab the stick, but use your two fingers here in the back and bring that third finger in and control it like that and hold it and just kind of bring everything in around it like that 
say, somebody take this stick out of my hand. They're not going to be able to. And the reason why is because you've got so much surface contact on the stick. You've got a lot of skin meeting that stick right there. And it's going to hold it in place by default. Now, earlier on in another lesson, I told you basically how we're constantly making little adjustments and, you know, shifts to bring the stick, you know, in like that, you know, closer. We're having to constantly choke up. Uh, and you know pull up on it because the stick wants to keep leaving us via this ratcheting action okay the thing is is that it makes it when your hands looser it makes it a lot easier to complete that because you're not having to grip for like the death grip here in the front what this is going to do it's going to promote carpal tunnel syndrome in a big way and the reason why is because you have to use tension to do that now tension the only place you should use tension is in uh, uh, buzz strokes like this. This is when it's okay to get up on those front fingers like that, on the, that index and thumb. And that's when it's good. But see, look, I'm here doing I'm doing double strokes, and it looks like I'm doing great double strokes. But let me get on my knee and do them. They're not doing anything. And the reason why, I'm not controlling any of that. That's all rebound. When you've got the back of your hand working it like this, those are much more positive double strokes. I might lack a little bit of speed because I'm not using the rebound so much, but the thing is, is I've got control of them. And I'm on my knee right now. Actually, sounds kind of good. Wait, look, oh, there it goes. You see, like, like the dog, yeah. <laughs> I better stop. Okay, so anyways, a good exercise to start developing the back of your hand just wrap that pinky around it like that, you see? Okay, so my hands are all flayed out. I've got my pinkies around the back of the stick. And just start making single strokes like this with all your fingers off. See like that? Now bring one finger at a time around the stick. You're gonna feel a little more positive contact. Now notice what I'm doing. I'm not using any fingers here. I'm using wrists. That's the proper way to do this. And when you get your wrists involved into the whole mix, then you're using more efficient motions. Your, 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 your wrists are going to become more efficient. You're using the, as large a muscle group as needed to propel that stick at that moment. So in other words, you're, you're, it's, it's just becoming a more efficient system. These are systems. Think of your grip as a system. Okay, we're gonna talk about that a little more in a minute here. So here I've got just my back two fingers doing single strokes. Like okay, now I'm going to bring my middle finger in like this. You see, I've got three like that. Now let's just stop here. That probably feels a little weird and a little uncomfortable, right? Yeah, because it feels weird and uncomfortable to me. Okay, so let me show you this. If you can do this, see these three fingers cradling the stick in my hand? Look, you see how it's got a little bit of action happening right there? It's got that action look, and now if I pull in with my pinky, you see like that? It's, if I do this, what I'm doing right now, just kind of pulling in, and now you just loosen that whole concept and try to get your hand around it, okay? And what I mean by loosening it, you know when you stare at something, you kind of squint and, and you can kind of fog, uh, fog the edges, kind of blur the edges of something you're looking at just to, you know, uh, try to you know get a little perspective on it do the same thing with your grip okay you're not going to you're not uh, don't think that you have to be in control of every single little pull just start pulling like that and kind of like let that action sort of influence this action so it'll be kind of like a, a it'll resonate through the stick so this look my thumb is open my hand is completely open at this point right now I could actually do a gig just using that by itself because I've got full control of the stick. I might not be able to do any fancy double strokes or buzz rolls because I need something to brace that upon. But the thing is, is this right here by itself? See, look at my hands. I'm just. See, I, I can't do double strokes like that. But I can get paradiddles out of it just by using the rebound. Look, my thumbs are still open, right? Okay, now, let's talk about your thumbs. If, right there, thumb and the middle finger, like that, see? If you use this right here, that 
cradling action and then bring the thumb in just kind of let it sort of find a place against like there if you do that then you've got a little bit something cool going on there and you've got some control of it now your index finger is uh, going to act more like an idler what's an idler you say you know like on those 10 speed bikes the derailleur system in the back it's got the little thing that kind of little arm that flips down and kind of tightens it keeps that chain pulled tight yeah that's what that is it's an idler okay so basically what that's going to do it's it's just there to kind of just to give a little support and to not let the stick go flying out of your hand it becomes more of a guide so here you can do single strokes like this just singles in each hand and then the idea is to get your hands as loose and relaxed as they can be while still maintaining control you should always err on the side of relaxedness if the stick falls out of your hand that's a better thing to have happen than being too tight on it because the idea what we're trying to do is we're trying to back up from tension we're trying to back away from the tension sir <laughs> so get away from the tension and pull back into the back of your hands and there is a lot of relaxation now I know a lot of people this is gonna be a hard habit to break because you're so used to being in the front of your hands right here and believe me it took me a long time to break this myself I had to sit there and kind of really become conscious of it and I remember it took you know it just it's, it's a, you know it's a habit so you just have to break the habit of this and you just start pulling back in your hand so when you're playing grooves or something what I recommend is if you're just sitting there playing a groove on the kit shift to the back of your hand when you're doing it and you'll get a little more you know uh, you, you'll start feeling it so not necessarily that you're, you're practicing on your gig or whatever but the thing is, is you're making a small adjustment that allows you to relax another benefit from using the back of your hand is that if you, if you, you know, if your the back of your hand gets uh, tired, you can always shift up to the frontal fingers, give those digits a couple of minutes, or you know, thirty seconds of rest, and then get back on it. So if you're having to play single strokes for a long period of time or whatever, you can just shift to the back of the hand. See right there what I did? I got my, now here I'm back in the front of my hand go to the back that's a good exercise to practice as well and that way it sort of illustrates to you the front and the back of the hand you hear the sound difference a little more resonance on the back so and so forth <clears throat> grip is really important because like I say it is the conduit between it's the connecting point between the stick and your brain Okay, this is this linkage right here that we have to concern our, ourselves with. Staying true to this, uh, developing our linkage is going to make us better players. It's going to make us faster players. It's going to make us stronger players. It's going to make us have more gusto. I love that word. Refreshing. Grapefruit flavor. Damn, it's good. Ah! Okay, anyway, if you know what to get me for Christmas, just give me a 12 pack of that or some Raven's Brew three pack of Billy Oak coffee. Give me a 15 pound bag. No, the 50 pound bag. Did I say 15? I said 50. Did I say fi 500? Oh, yeah, the 500 pound bag. Just truck, garage, dump. It's fine. Uh, okay, so, um,. Uh, Drumming, basically, like, uh, it's, there's a, kind of a lot of paradoxes in it, and one of the paradoxes is, is that you have to be completely loose in order to play completely tight. When you play completely loose, when you're playing very loosely and uh, groovily, then your beats are going to be tight. And when your beats are tight, then you're going to, uh, you better get some baggy clothes because your pockets are going to get deeper for all the money, right? <laughs> Anyways, uh, so that's what I tell myself every day when I wake up from, you know, not necessarily 12 hour sleeps, but this tonight, last night was freaking 12 hours of sleep. Anyway, um, so I digress. Let's talk about some traditional grip stuff for a moment because I know there's people out there who are like, I play their drums the proper way. <laughs> Sorry. 
All right, so uh, the exercise to develop your traditional grip is going to be uh, to put your hand down on a table like that, and you see how my thumb is like this? Now, in the past, and I've told you, it's like keep a straight line with your arm. However, uh, yeah, I'll just use my leg here because I'm trying to squish it all into a practice pad. It's not working. So I'll use my leg. Now, what I did, did you see that move? I kind of like, you know, pick it up and then drop it, and now I'm bouncing it like a basketball. Use your thumb. But the rest of your fingers all need to be loose and relaxed. That's the trick, is just to make these guys out here loose and relaxed. It's hard to twiddle my fingers and do this at the same time. But I assure you that they're completely relaxed. If they were any more relaxed, they'd be dead. Well, then I'd be dead, and that would suck. So, here I'm doing this. Okay, now, what this is going to allow you to do, look, you see how far back I can bring my, nut, my stroke? With traditional grips, a little differently, because your hand is moving, you know, you're side and an up hand like that. All these little mechanical things mean a lot. All your movements make a difference. Your lack of movements make a difference. How your hands, how your fingers interact with your hands. Here I'm doing my right hand. I'm just letting, see right there? Let's go back to here for a second because I want to go back to that. I'm bouncing it like a basketball. A lot of you guys had this burned into your brain. This. You're using your wrist. Okay, that's great that you're using your wrist and your wrist is great, but the thing is, is that when you've got that extra little bit of air back there, that extra muscular stretch, look how far back my hand can go. If you could see it sideways. So I probably showed you sideways like this. Let's put that right there. That's, uh, that's what's going to, you know, being loose, getting that looseness. Gives you a little more room for really slamming those back things down. And you got your thumb on top of it, so your thumb is a lot stronger, and it's a lot stronger than this, because number one, this is in a juxtaposed position to do that, and you have to rely on your wrist. Number two, your thumb's right there in this perfect spot to just really drive that sucker home. All right, so let's talk about rotational points. All right, so your thumb and your middle finger right here. If you imagine a nail being driven through here, it goes through the stick and through the other side, that's a good point. That's a good place to think about your rotational points. This is a hinge, okay? So like if I pull my hand, if I pull it backwards and pull my hand like that, and if I put my hand, move forward and open my fingers like that, so this by itself, just this push-pull thing like that, Okay, is, it, is that translating? See, down, up, down, up, down, up. Pretend like there's a track there. You see? This. That's the motion. That's a stroke exploded right there. Look at my fingers. You see my fingers? Now I'll get my fingers in on the act. See how everything pulls? There, 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 there. Like that. And that works in the left hand too on tradition. I mean, on match grip. Sorry, not on traditional grip. Traditional grip is going to be, you know, a whole different thing. So um, let's go back to match grip because I know most people are going to be match grip players because uh, traditional grip players are becoming uh, harder to find. That's what I'm discovering. So this right here, uh, there's my hinge, my rotation point. Pull back, forward, back, forward. And so it's probably about a track of about go along like that. So if you can think of your hand as a mechanical machine, it pushes forward on this track, the stick comes back, see like that. So it's all kind of got a ratio happening. It's got a, a bit of a mechanical thing. That's what you want to develop right there, you see? Push, pull, like that. If you work on this right here, that's going to sort of help develop this looseness. And then you get your fingers in on it in the backhand like that and that's really how you can explode a stroke. You're exploding strokes. <laughs> so anyways, 
those are all the little introspective things that exist right there. Another thing that I can highly recommend is these kind of like switch, come up to the highest point of your stroke and switch them. Try to make it a mirror image of each other. OJ, hey buddy, what's happening? <laughs> I see you there. You use all Aquarian heads. Yes, I do. I've been an Aquarian artist since 2001. I've been playing Aquarian drum heads since 1993 or 4. Yeah, Aquarian makes great stuff. I was with Aquarian back when they, uh, before they had the, uh, the design, the, the heads that uh, never pulled out. Um, man, a lot of you younger cats, you missed a whole fun part of time right there when stuff wasn't quite developed as it is these days, man, you know, uh, so you'd be playing and then your snare would start sounding like crap and you'd look and the glue had come out of the flesh hoop, as they called it, that's the metal ring, it's called the flesh hoop and it goes back to the days of when they were made out of uh, calf skin. So, um, yeah, the, well, now they just shorten it to the hoops, but yeah, the, the head would pop out of the hoop and it was, yeah, it was ugly. <laughs> You had to carry at least a couple of spares on you. But um, yeah, Aquarian makes damn good heads. They're my favorite. Um, personally, I use Super 2s on the Toms, coated Super 2s, which is a 7 mil and a 5 mil ply. It's a two ply head. So they're a little bit thinner. Uh, a response to, aka an Emperor, is going to be two plies of 7 mil film. So I'm using the uh, Super 2s. Um, and on the snare drum, just a texture coated reverse dot. And on the bass drum, super kick too. It's just the best. I love that. Love it, love it, love it. And uh, I use the uh, kick pad as well. I think, what I, I don't think I have a kick pad on this one right now. I think I'm using uh, uh, Eric Berenfeld's Slug Batter Badge. That's what I'm using because I've been with Slug. They were my first, uh, no, second endorsing company. I've been with them since. Uh, 1993 or 1994. Wow. Damn, time flies. Well, it's going to be 30 years coming up here soon, right? Damn. 20 years? I don't know. Not, I can't math right now. I just woke up a little while ago. Yeah. <laughs> so, anyways, uh, drum corps. No, I, uh, I was never in drum corps, actually. <laughs> no, I was not, um, organized enough to do that, and, uh, my uh, development consisted of, at the time, was going uh, to the corner of the schoolyard and because I knew all my rudiments, I would uh, get people, they, the band director would say, hey, you drummers, go out to the corner of the schoolyard and practice your stuff. I was like, okay, cool. So we go over and go to the end of the schoolyard and, and they say, okay, what are we going to work on today? Paradiddles. Okay, here's a paradiddle. I'd show them a paradiddle. Then I'd run over to my buddy's house across the street and have breakfast. <laughs> and. Uh, uh, and then I come back to the school. I'm like, show me your paradiddles, dude. And okay. And uh, then we go back in. And teacher was none the wiser. Phil Odom, if you're watching this. <laughs> oh, dude. Oh, that was some fun times. Anyways, uh, yeah. I reckon you know drum corps is kind of weird because drum corps uh, leaders, the the people who are running a drum corps, they you, they're very particular about how technique is handled, okay, because they want a specific thing, they need a specific thing, everything has got to be picture perfect, uh, you know, basically they're stamping out clones, at least from what I remember of it, and, and that's good because it's, it's a system to train to, it's a, it's a, uh, it's a measuring stick that, that everybody's got to kind of rise up to and, and, you know, make the grade, so to speak, um, so, that being said, uh, if you are in drum corps, uh, first of all, listen to your instructor. But if you're uh, looking for, you know, alternate methods, and the thing is, there's so many different ways because there's going to be somebody who's going to come up and say, "Oh yeah, uh, that what that dude he's doing, what what I'm doing, it's completely that's bad advice. It's going to screw you up." Okay, yeah, everybody's got that opinion. Okay. Uh, I can tell you this, that for me, this is what works. I don't have any health problems. Actually, I can, let me rephrase that. 
I've got arthritis in both of my thumbs. Okay, I've got uh, the, the uh, cartilage between my uh, trapezius and the uh, bone in there. The bones, the cartilage is, is gone away. And it kind of sucks. But the thing is, it does not affect my playing in any way at all. I, it doesn't even hurt it. It's just, it's a hereditary thing that I have. But matter of fact, when I play my drums, I don't feel any, it, it takes away any pain that was there to begin with because of the circulation. So it's actually, the drumming is healthier for me. Now, if I were pinching right here, if I was putting a lot of tension there, it would, I can't even imagine the pain that I would endure, you know, after playing a gig. That would just suck. If I had to do buzz rolls all night, it would kill me. I know that but I'm not doing buzz rolls all night and you know, doing them for two, three minutes at a time, I could still do that. But if I had to do it, you know, everything. Anyways, um, enough about me, huh? Uh, oh, and there's that thing again, right? So, um, yeah, Be, playing loose. There's, no, there's nothing wrong with playing loose. It's like an engine that runs perpetually cool, okay? There's nothing wrong with that. If, if an engine runs within a specific temper, temperature range and runs like at the lower end of it, that engine's gonna last longer. Okay, so tension equals heat. When you tense up, you're creating like a hot zone, a, a hot area. So the thing is, is to, to relax everything and make it work better for you. And that's when you relax everything, it makes, uh, it makes your flow better. And it also makes it so where you don't have to think so hard and you can, uh, it just, Everything's in, in congruence, right? So, um, drum corps, okay, you got clowns, you know, I played for President Clinton when he came to my school. Cool. Nice. That's awesome, man. Wow. Did, I mean, did the, did you hang out with any Secret Service people? <laughs> they seem like kind of, uh, uptight folks. I mean, I don't know. I guess you would be too if... Part of your job was like, you know, having to take a bullet for that dude over there, right? Oh, God. Oh, man. I, I would be sort of uptight. Yeah. Anyway. Okay. So, uh, enough about that. Uh, basically, I came here today to tell you all to play looser. And, uh... So, oh, he just sat there and made a bunch of single strokes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I did. <laughs> but it's how you do a single stroke is what's really important. So anyways, I'm going to sign off right now. Um, and we can come back to this. I'll let you guys, uh, you know, sort of digest this. And any questions that pop up, I will address in the next video. So, all right. There you go. There's the sermon for today, huh? All right. Take care, y'all.